Good evening, and welcome to Buchanan Field at Gonzaga College High School for this matchup between the Gonzaga Eagles and the St. John's Cadets. My name is Jackson Brewer, class of Gonzaga 2024, and I'm here with Alex Marzi, Gonzaga class of 2023. Alex, what do you think are the main storylines to watch in this matchup? Well, I think we're going to have to look at how St. John's can control the ball of this game and get past a very impressive Gonzaga defense. And uh, that hasn't allowed more than one goal in a game this entire season. So, Yeah, this Gonzaga defense is senior-led. Uh, they're a very experienced group. And they don't tend to give up many goals past the first 15 minutes. So what St. John's has to do in this matchup is get a quick goal and then play stout defense. Exactly. And I think the seniority of this class should not be overlooked. I mean, these are guys that have played together for four years and know each other on and off the field. And I think that just leads to a lot of great chemistry, especially on the defensive side. Yeah, certain players to watch, like uh, Stephen Gately. He's a very talented center back for the Gonzaga defense. These are players that are going to make the St. John strikers' lives miserable. Exactly. Uh, Gonzaga class of 2024 has produced a very good striker named Daniel Bowman. He has been setting the world on fire. He is scoring over one goal a game, and he is just proving himself as one of the premier players in the WCC. Yeah, and I think if they want to try to control him in this game, St. John's defense has to play very tight against tight defense especially with him but really with the entire Gonzaga offense you know we've we've seen this season that if you give Gonzaga an inch they're going to capitalize on that and they don't make many mistakes so they just have to play tight precise defense what sets Bowman apart is when he gets the ball he can use his feet he's very good he has great foot skills and then when he gets into open space his speed sets him apart he can he's faster than pretty much any center back he's going against. Exactly. And that is why he's putting the ball in the back of the net so many times. He's gonna be a danger in the WCSC this year and especially next year. Yeah. His speed, I think, is definitely just one of the key components of his game that makes him such a threat to opposing defenders. Gonzaga has had a phenomenal start to the year. They are undefeated so far, 10-0, 2-0 in conference record. And in the Max Preps uh, national rankings, they're 18th at the moment. What do you think Gonzaga has to do to keep this momentum going towards the rest of the season? I think they just have to keep playing the strong offense that they've been playing this entire season. They have to keep using that ball movement, that stellar ball movement, and I just I think they should keep going, doing what they're doing. Gonzaga has played uh, other games in uh, in loud environments, especially at Buchanan Field. Uh, early in September, they uh, beat Landon 2-1 in an environment very similar to this. Uh, two student sections, a very loud environment. Gonzaga gave up a goal early, but they were able to come back and then play stout defense for the rest of the game. Uh, scored one in the first half on a penalty and then scored the equalizer in the second half. Gonzaga is very good at playing from behind. They can, they're very calm. They don't freak out when they give up a goal. They just tend to focus on how can we get this ball in the back of the net? How can we win this game? Exactly, and whenever it's a St. John versus Gonzaga game, there's that history of that rivalry and there's that added sort of level of pressure that I think can really elevate a game. Um, and I think that, you know, some people really thrive under that pressure, so we're just going to see how, how the players react this time. Uh, St. John's has struggled a bit compared to Gonzaga to start this season. Uh, they're 2-4-1. Uh, they've given up eight, they have uh, given up, they have scored eight goals and given up 13. And they don't tend to play well on the road. They only have one goal so far. Uh, they only have one win so far on the road. And we'll see if they can get another one tonight as we prepare for kickoff at Buchanan Field. Yeah, I mean, this is a very important game for Gonzaga because they want to keep that perfect record. But it's also important for St. John's as they look to sort of turn around the season and become a threat in the playoffs. And we have kickoff at Buchanan Field. Uh, Gonzaga um, maintains possession early. And they look to swing it around the back like they do so well. This is what the Gonzaga defense is so good at, staying calm under pressure. Even when they give the ball in situations like this, their center backs are able to step together and clear it away like that. So. Yeah, and I think it's that chemistry on field that lets them be so cool under pressure, even in these high pressure offensive situations. St. John's has the ball here early in uh, Gonzaga's half. Good work by the St. John's striker to keep possession on this side of the field. Oh, but he is caught offside. It's a bit unlucky for the striker. Yeah, that was a great bit of skill. It's uh, too bad it was called offside. That uh, play right there really just showed how calm Gonzaga is under pressure. They knew the person in front of them was good with their skill, but they stayed back, and they didn't let him pass them. They let him uh, play with his feet, and they were able to catch him on sides. Yeah, I think a lot of times when you have a, a play like that, 
some players tend to take risks. They try to go for glory and try to steal the ball, but get Zaga, they stayed back, they knew what they were doing, and, and it worked out for them. Zag is able to play a great ball and get the ball on the St. John's side of the field. Well, that's a great through ball with a lot of open space with the center mid. Good swing by Gonzaga. Outside mid tries to take him on 1v1, but the ball is stolen by the St. John's as they prepare to start an attack. Balls went back by Gonzaga and they look to possess it in their own half. Zag is on the attack here. And that's going to be a clear foul any day of the week. St. John's defender stuck his leg out, and Gonzaga player smartly fell down. Huge opportunity here for Gonzaga uh, outside the St. John's box. Yeah, I think it. Uh, I think they were given a gift with this foul, and now that they can really capitalize on this and play the great offense they've been playing this game. This could be a, a real scoring opportunity. This is an early mistake by St. John, by St. John's, to see if Gonzaga can capitalize here. Three-man wall for St. John's as they look to defend this free kick. That was a good effort, but it goes just left. Bent it over the wall really well, but it was a little bit off target at the end of the day. Yeah, but I think what we've learned from this Gonzaga season is that, you know, they're not going to take this opportunity and they're not going to, like, fold under it. They, they're calm, they're cool under pressure, they make a mistake, they get back up, they keep, they keep playing solid soccer, so. Early scare for St. John's, but they look to possess the ball here. Zag is able to win the ball in the midfield. You see Daniel Bowman there, 14, attack the ball. He's so quick off the feet. He's a threat whenever he's uh, looking to make a move. Exactly, only three and a half minutes in, he's already proven himself on the field. Great pass by the center mid there as they suit St. John swings it out wide. That's great defense from Gonzaga. Wonderful slide tackle there. Yeah, that was just some of that solid defense we've seen from Gonzaga all season. You gotta think this is a positive start for St. John's, uh, considering uh, how great Gonzaga has been to start games this season. Yeah. They, they gave up one free kick, but they're doing okay to keep the ball in Gonzaga's side of the field so far. Definitely, I think their ball movement has been really well, has been really good so far in the game. They've been keeping it away from Gonzaga. They've been keeping it in, uh, in key opportunities for them, and I, uh, I think this is a good start so far for, for St. John's. And if they can keep going, they might just get a win. In St. John's most recent game, they tied uh, nil-nil to good council to good council. So they clearly can play some defense, but mm. if they can get this early equalizer, uh, they're going to put Gonzaga under some pressure. And uh, Yeah, and definitely with a very high-energy fan environment, an, an early goal could, could really change the momentum of the game. St. John's players both go for the same ball. Early shot for St. John's. Tommy Kennan is able to keep that out with a little bit of pressure. A wonderful interception from the Gonzaga front. Taking on multiple St. John's defenders. They're able to keep him on the outside. Well done from them. Great defense from St. John's there. We're really able to force him to the outside. Yeah, I think uh, he had a great opportunity there, but St. John's defense, they, they knew what they were doing. They kept him on the outside, and they, um, and they really stopped that scoring opportunity. Great throw in for Gonzaga. If they can keep doing that throughout the game, they're going to put St. John's under a lot of pressure, and that's going to result in a corner. Good, uh, good opportunities on set, set, set pieces for uh, Gonzaga early in this game. Yeah. And they've been doing well in these sorts of uh, in these sorts of plays all season, so we let's see what they do. Oh, 
wonderful opportunity for Gonzaga. Free header inside the six yard box. St. John's is lucky he didn't get that on frame. Yeah, I mean, I think that was just a, a beautiful, a beautiful uh, corner kick and then it was just, just unlucky that it didn't go in. Set please play was perfectly run by Gonzaga. Exactly, yeah. St. John's appear, uh, appears to be going for the long ball, more on goal kicks to start this game instead of playing it out of the back. I think it's a risky move, but we'll see if it works out for them. Great play from captain Andre Barrett to get to that ball for first. And you know, Gonzaga has such a tight defensive squad. Going for those long balls can be risky with how, how, well, how good they are at, intercept at interceptions and at controlling the ball movement. So. A bit of messy play here. Oh, that's a wonderful pass. And that's going to be a foul call. He looked to get the ball, but he might have followed through and taken out the man after. Yeah, I think it was just a, a small mistake, but it, but it cost him. He steps in, his shin guard gets the ball, but he falls through, takes, yeah. out, the, takes out the offensive player. That's going to be a foul at any time. Yeah. Gonzaga's looking to run something off here with a long boot. That's a wonderful set piece. St. John's keeper is able to punch it out. A mistake by the Gonzaga defense, but they are a coordinated bunch. The other center back comes in, clears that out score for yeah, that was, I think, a bit of a messy play from the uh, Gonzaga defense, and we'll see if St. John's can capitalize on that. In this, area of the f in this area of the field, uh, St. John's is always going to have a bit of trouble right in front of the Gonzaga student section. Mm -hmm. That, um, you know, the noise and the environment and the cheers, I mean, it's always going to be a little bit of added psychological pressure when you're right in front of the opposing student section. Good throw there, but Gonzaga's able to clear it well. Great bit of defense from Gonzaga. Oh, that's a wonderful flick. Can he get to it? No, St. John's is going to clear it. But Gonzaga has uh, cleared the ball from his own half. They look to be taking a quick throw in here. Very quick throw in, yeah. Oh, that's going to be a foul call. It looks like he held him. And uh, St. John's is going to have a... Uh, Gonna have a set piece in dangerous territory. These are the type of balls where you can whip them in to the back post, uh, get, put the keeper under some trouble. You're like you're not shooting from this distance, but you can really yeah. uh, put it in the mixing bowl in there. They're gonna take it early. They got a free header, but it is off target. Yeah, it was a great opportunity, but I think just a little bit off target there, and they could have uh, done a little bit, been a little bit more precise. But I think in general, it was a, a, a decent opportunity. St. John, St. John's is impressing up real high. They're giving uh, Gonzaga. Gonzaga a bit, bit of time here, but Gonzaga is going to play that ball. Messi play in the back almost leads to a mistake, and that's going to be yeah, good I mean, for I can't, believe, throw. I can't believe I thought that was going to be a goal, just from that messy bit of defense from, uh, from St. John's, but they seem to have recovered it all right. Gonzaga's taking their throws really quick. They clearly want to speed up this game. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's a wise decision just trying to keep the idea of keeping that pressure on St. John's defense, you know, not giving them a minute to breathe. I think that's uh, going to be a smart move, especially with how strong their offense has been all season. On the contrary, St. John's isn't really pressuring, uh, as you see here, they aren't really pressuring yeah. uh, Gonzaga's center backs really hard, but that's, and that's going to give opportunities for the center backs to step up like uh, he is here and whip in balls uh, and play balls to the feet of the center mid strikers. It's going to be a foul on Gonzaga. Looks like their feet got a little bit tangled there. No mm -hmm. malice, but yeah. No, I agree that St. John's is not playing as tight uh, defense as I might have anticipated that they would, just given the strength of the uh, Gonzaga offense. But I think they clearly have a strategy, so we're going to see how that works out. But I personally would have uh, considered playing a little tighter defense. Good opportunity for St. John's there, but uh, the Gonzaga defender shielded. Uh, the striker well. Yeah, that was a great defensive play and a great play by the keeper. The thing about this play style uh, St. John's is employing right now is uh, 
if they go down a goal or two, it, they're going to have to start pressuring, and their strikers' legs are going to get real tired. It's going to be a switch for them. Yeah. R r what they might be doing right now is trying to sit, sit back a little bit mm -hmm. and uh, keep this game 0-0 zero, zero, zero for a little bit. But if they give up that early goal, they are going to have to pressure or Gonzaga's going to have all time, and th they can clearly play around the back as they are doing now. Yeah, I definitely agree. I mean, I think this th their play style is fine for now, but if, if Gonzaga lets in a goal, they might have to make a quick switch that could uh, lead to some mistakes. St. John's looks to uh, be playing three front men, and uh, mm -hmm. it seems as if the, they are uh, letting the center backs uh, dribble and have a little bit of time, but they are pressuring when they swing it out wide to the outside backs. Yeah, and it seems to be giving them some good opportunities, so we're going to see how that keeps going. Zach's got a throw in at about midfield. It's a great touch from Daniel Bowman, but the St. John's defense able to clear it away. Good idea from Gonzaga, but execution was a bit off. Yeah. See if St. John's can really get some attacks going and uh, put the Gonzaga defense under a bit more pressure. Yeah, I think so far, I mean, they've had several scoring opportunities, but the pressure hasn't fully been there for the Gonzaga defense, and I think if, if St. John's can really move up that pressure a little bit, they could uh, they could get a lot more opportunities and just, in general, put, uh, put some real high pressure on the uh, Gonzaga defense and see what happens. Gonzaga strikers are almost doing the opposite of what the St. John's strikers are doing. They're putting tons of pressure on the center backs mm, exactly. and strikers uh, and uh, goalkeeper, and uh, they're really causing they're really causing uh, problems back there. The goalkeepers have to boot it out twice. We'll see if they can continue doing that. They do have a deep bench, so yeah. um, it's interesting how the two teams are playing such different offensive styles, with the more aggressive, high pressure offense and the more sort of laid back laid back sort of passing offense. That's a good cross in from Gonzaga. That would be a goal kick. Lots of set pieces to begin this game. Yeah. Several free kicks for each team. No one's been able to put one away yet. No, but I think both teams have had some pretty impressive uh, some pretty impressive set pieces and crosses for the first half of the game. That might be what this game comes down to, uh, who can put a set piece away and get all the momentum. Yeah. I think especially in a rivalry game like this, momentum is so key, so whoever puts away that first goal is really going to have an edge for the rest of the game. A little nudge in the back. The Gonzaga, Gonzaga players did not like that, but it will be a St. John's throw. St. John's attempts a through ball. They're really trying to play down the right side. Gonzaga's doing a good job defending, and that will be a goal kick. Another great play by the Gonzaga defense, who really, like we said at the, at the top of the game, they're playing as a unit. They're playing like people that know, that understand each other's play styles very well, as they've been playing together for a long time. This is a very senior-driven team, and I think that uh, that has worked out well for them. St. John's attackers converse on the ball, but Gonzaga's able to clear it away. St. John's with it right back. They look to have even numbers here as they attack, and they're able to swing it out wide. And that's another, another phenomenal defensive play for Gonzaga. Yeah, the Gonzaga defense has really been on fire this game. And, and I think if they can keep doing that, they can really, they can, uh, really stop a lot of pressure being put on by the St. John's. Captain Andre Barrett's able to step up. Looks to play one of the center mids in the middle, but a little bit of miscommunication there. And we'll go out for Gonzaga throw. Even start to the game so far, would you say, Alex? I would definitely agree, yeah. I think uh, both teams have had their strengths and weaknesses, but so far it's been a very even start. And uh, I'm just excited to see where this game goes, if each, if each team's contrasting play style can, uh, can work out. Gonzaga's probably had the bulk of the possession, but mm -hmm. St. John's is, uh, have been able, has been able to get the ball and try to attack off it. 
Yeah, I think both teams have done very well offensively. I think what it comes down to is the uh, Gonzaga defense and their control of the ball and get leading from de the leading from defense to offense and getting those opportunities is, uh, has really been the game come down to so far. St. John's defense has, defense has been doing a great job of clearing those uh, thr uh, through balls that Gonzaga keeps playing. Mm -hmm. We'll see if they can continue that going into the second half of the first half. Yeah, and I think when ball movement is so pivotal to the Gonzaga offense, those clearances are really important, especially early in the game. It's a good win for Gonzaga. Look to play the ball back post. That attacker falls in the box. No call from the referee. Yeah, the Gonzaga student section is very happy about that. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think they are. It looked to be contact, but probably enough to warrant a penalty in the ref's mind. Mm -hmm. That'll be enough for a foul. On the other hand, yeah. Brings down. Good sportsmanship shown by the St. John's player helping that. Yeah. It's a tackle at uh, in the middle of the field that's going to happen to stop the counterattack. It's a smart tackle from the St. John's uh, defender. Yeah, stopping the momentum, stopping the flow of play, I think at this point in the game is very, is very key for St. John's. Looks to be a St. John's player down. That's going to stop play. Make sure the young man's okay. Probably a good idea. Alex, so far in this game, uh, Gonzaga's been able to swing the ball around the back, and St. John's has been uh, trying to take advantage of their mistakes up front and uh, start counterattacks, but um, has less so possessed the ball. Yeah, I would agree with that. I think uh, Gonzaga has had the bulk of the possessions, and I agree with what you said about swinging around the back. They're really using that uh, defense to transition into uh, effective offensive possessions, so I, uh, I'm excited to see where that, if that continues in this game. You gotta think though, this has been a great start for St. John's. They've been able to keep it at no-no. Gonzaga hasn't had any huge opportunities so far. Exactly, and this is definitely an underdog story for St. John's. So the fact that they've been able to keep it at such an even pace is, is really a testament to, to their skill. It's gonna be St. John's throwing the Gonzaga half. We've seen a lot of these uh, little battles for the ball around the sidelines. Mm -hmm. um, we'll see if either team can really stretch it out, swing the ball, and uh, create an attack through the other side. St. John's is doing just that right now. If they can swing it to that, uh, the right winger, it's yeah. going to be good for them. Definitely a smart move on their part. That's a great attack from St. John's. The Gonzaga defense able to clear it, and that's going to be a great pick. Great bit of Gonzaga defense there with uh, a dangerous opportunity from St. John's. The Gonzaga definitely retaliated, and here we have the. Uh, the Gonzaga student section showing their enthusiasm. Always out there support, supporting the purple and white. Mm -hmm. St. John's is again able to stop the Gonzaga long ball and uh, start a counterattack. This time Gonzaga is able to thwart it pretty, pretty early. St. John's isn't able to get into the attacking third. Mm. Great move on the outside. Just a bit of miscommunication there from Gonzaga, but they seem to have recovered. St. John's has been uh, stabbing a bit, uh, committing some uh, fouls at this point of the field. But with the way they've defended the set pieces so far, I don't think it's the worst thing in the world for them. Honestly, I agree, and I, I don't. I think these are calculated moves, and I think that they're effective, and I think the way that they've been playing the rest of the defense, I think that, that this could really help them. 
Gonzaga is a team that's really able to thrive off that counterattack. So St. John's is really trying to thwart that early and not give them many yeah. opportunities to play through balls into the attack in third. Yeah. St. John's keepers uh, gonna step up here, like to play an attacking ball. That was a good play by the St. John's attack, but it is blocked. Mm -hmm. And I think that in that encounter, it was more just uh, a stellar Gonzaga defense than any mistake the St. John's offense made. Yeah, the idea of the attack was really good for yeah. uh, St. John's in a, against an opponent with a little bit of a less less uh, concentrated and smart group that might have worked, but yeah. Gonzaga was able to focus on the individual men and make sure everyone was being marked. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that's what they've been doing the whole game just playing smart defense that has really been able to stop a lot of good St. John's opportunities. St. John's is again letting Gonzaga, the Gonzaga center backs basically walk towards the, towards the St. John's attack in third. And they probably are doing that to save their striker's legs or mm -hmm. even just concentrate their defense because they're so confident they can stop those long through balls. Yeah, definitely. St. John's keeper has been responsible for uh, a lot of through balls, playing them all well to the strikers. Yeah, and I think even amongst uh, a Gonzaga defense that definitely knows how to thwart that, he's still been doing excellent on, on those. All it takes is one mistake from the Gonzaga defense, and uh, St. John's is probably banking they make that at some point. Yeah. but I think with the precision of the Gonzaga defense has shown so far, I don't see that mistake happening anytime soon. Another long through ball. We're really impressed about how the uh, St. John's defense is dealing with those. They're uh, clearing them away uh, quickly, and they've really not allowed the, the um, Gonzaga strikers to get much room and win many of those balls. And I think that's what they had to do coming into this game, and it was a smart move by their coach. Yeah, it's just uh, aggressive and effective and efficient defensive play from St. John's. We've got a quick attack here from St. John's. They don't have numbers, though, and that's going to be uh, quick work for uh, goalkeeper Tom McKinnon. Gonzaga has definitely dominated the bulk of the, uh, the possession mm -hmm. just with these uh, moves between the center backs and how much time they're being allowed. Yeah, I think they're definitely taking their time using the center backs effectively, using the center backs effectively. Um, I think that's a smart move from their coaching staff. But when they do see an opportunity, when they do see some open space, they definitely do capitalize on that. They're not afraid to, to use that to their advantage, but they're definitely uh, not taking any stupid chances at times. I think so far this game, though, the St. John's has played exactly how they want to play. Mm. They've really slowed the game down. They're forcing Gonzaga to play it around their back and wait for an opportunity. And Gonzaga's a team that's used to scoring a lot of goals and then keeping leads, and St. John's is force really forcing them to slow slow things down and play at their pace. Yeah, I think one of the goals of the St. John's team had to have been to contain those uh, Gonzaga strikers, and I think so far they've done a great job of that. This is a good move by the uh, Gonzaga uh, St. John's winger, but it's going to be a foul on Gonzaga, and that's going to be a it's going to be a good opportunity for a St. John's set piece. Yeah, I think, uh, like we said, the set piece has been really key this game, and I think uh, this could be a really important one for St. John's, especially so close to Gonzaga goal. In this situation, they really want to swing it around the back post and make the keeper make a decision of whether to come out or whether to stay in the net. Yeah. If they can do that, they have a good chance of scoring. But Isolating the keeper, making him make those tough calls that maybe he doesn't know what to do, that's, I think, very key. Gonzaga steps quickly and are able to win the ball and look to counter here. A uh, bit of miscommunication looked like for the St. John's offense, but Gonzaga used that to their advantage, and I, I think it worked out for them, but. Gonzaga's gonna have a throw deep in their uh, territory, right near the Gonzaga seam section. S 
St. John's is going to clear it. And Gonzaga hasn't had many opportunities in the St. John's final third this mm -hmm. game. Yeah, I think uh, early on in the game they had a few more opportunities, but so but now St. John's has slowed it down and, and not given them as many, many chances. This is what they're trying to do. They uh, want their wingers to really get at those outside backs when they do swing it out there and force mistakes like we just saw there. Mm -hmm. Gonzaga trying to recover from that mistake and, and save the offensive uh, possession. Good win for Gonzaga in St. John's territory. That's great defense for St. John's, and that's a great ball outside. They have a chance to counter here. Yeah, that was a that was just a great move on all sides. I think that was great, great defense from the transition to offense with the with the pass was, was really great. There's a foul there. Gonzaga player doesn't like it. St. John's looks to possess the ball a little bit. That's that's great defense from the Gonzaga player, forcing a foul that really kept his body in front of him. That's just that's just a great yeah. technical play. Shows a great amount of ability from that Gonzaga player. Ability, I think, is true, but also very good like knowledge of the game and the strategy. Like ma forcing him to make those plays and forcing him to make those fouls was, I think, a very smart move, a, a calculated move from the Gonzaga team. Gonzaga's making a substitution here. The space that St. John's is giving them really allows these uh, Gonzaga backs to step up. Like we see here, that's great defense from St. John's and they're able to get, uh, get the ball with the opportunity to quickly counter. Oh, and it's a mistake from the St. John's winger, which is gonna give Gonzaga back the ball. Yeah, I think when you're playing at a team at the level of Gonzaga, you can't really afford to uh, to make those mistakes. St. John's has an had an opportunity to go quick there and uh, and quickly uh, go at the Gonzaga defense, but they slowed it down. Yeah, and I think in general that's been their philosophy this game was to slow down the uh, Gonzaga offense, and I think they've been doing a good job of that so far. Gonzaga defense looks to play another ball in, but it's going to be stolen from St. John's off. They have numbers here. They can uh, attack quickly. This could be a great opportunity for St. John's. See if they capitalize on it. Oh, and the winger wasn't quite ready there. Uh, didn't expect the ball to come over there. Yeah. And it's going to go back to Gonzaga. Still a great, uh, great transition play from, from St. John's. Yep. They need to do more of that because uh, when they're able to steal the ball in the midfield, the Gonzaga defense is usually very split up from the sh uh, from the midfield, and if the yeah. St. John strikers are really able to establish their presence in the in that gap, they can really wreak some havoc. Yeah, I think one of St. John's best hopes against Gonzaga is to get that ball in midfield and, and have that strung out defense that they might be able to uh, to get the open space. On. Mistake from the St. John's defense here, but they're able to maintain possession. Wonderful play from the St. John's outside. Mid uh, able to win the ball there, but Gonzaga's able to win it back quick. Great heel flick as the Gonzaga looks to attack. Yeah, that was just a great pitch from Gonzaga. Mistake from uh, Gonzaga. Oh, that's a wonderful tackle. Great flick, and that's going to be a foul call on Gonzaga. I didn't see much there. The ref might have had a different angle. Maybe uh, faced around, held him back a little bit too much instead of turning his back looking for the ball. That's what I suspect happened, but I, again, I'm not quite sure. I didn't, I didn't see too much. I just don't think it's actually too much happy about that one. See what that is. 
It appears to be a foul on St. John's. And Gonzaga's gonna have an opportunity to play out of the back as we enter into the last 10 minutes of the first half. Yeah, and I think uh, playing on the back of the field has been one of Gonzaga's real strengths this game. Taking it around the back, controlling the flow of play, and I, I think they're doing the same thing right now. If I'm the St. John's coach at this point, I'm very pleased about how my team has played. Absolutely. We could be argued to have more chances than Gonzaga, and we're literally forcing the, their backs to play play balls, uh, difficult balls into the strikers that have been taking, have been taking possession a lot of the time, forcing attacks. Absolutely, and against such a high-ranking team as Gonzaga, the ability from St. John's to sort of control the ball movement and to not give them too many opportunities has, has really been a testament to them that they really can run with these uh, bigger teams. This is a Gonzaga team this year that is very talented. They were able mm -hmm. to go to the Jesuit Classic against some of the best teams in the country and were able to win. Yeah. Um, but St. John's has really been able to slow them down, force them to play out of the back. But going into the second half, if the game is still tied, do you think we'll see St. John's push up a little more, or do you think they'll stay back? Uh, I think they're going to stay back a little bit more just because um, they, they really need this win to change the momentum of the season, and they're going to try to play it safe, I think. But, uh, but we'll see. St. John's has an, had an opportunity to possess, but they're going to boot the ball back to midfield. Maybe a St. John's throw around midfield. That's a great, uh, great steal from St. John's, and they're able to get a foul. The ref is having a talk with the Gonzaga midfielder. He didn't like the boot after the ball. No, after he the did not. No, he did not. St. John Stryker attempts to get ahead on it, but Zaga defender did a great job to, to put his body into him and not let him get space. Yeah, so if, you, uh, if you watch here, without that Zaga defender playing as, as physically as he was, there really could have been a great scoring opportunity for St. John's, but he, uh, but he was really doing well boxing him out and just making sure he didn't get it, that opportunity and that space that he needed to uh, score. Zach is putting a bit more pressure on the St. John's defense. Oh, that's a wonderful through ball. St. John's going to have an opportunity here, but great defending. Just a beautiful bit of defending from the Zaga there, especially from the goalkeeper. Be a bit of a problem. The St. John's striker looked to uh, St. John's striker looked to be getting a bit too close to Tom McKinnon. Zaga defenders didn't uh, appreciate it, but it appears that it's been cleared up. Alex, it's a rivalry game. Yeah. Lots of emotions in the game. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's just going to make for, uh, for a lively environment. Yeah, and I think that's, I mean, it's always special when it's a St. John's Gonzaga game. There's added pressure. There's added history of all the, of all the games that have come before and, and will come after. So I think it's just a really special environment when, whenever Gonzaga plays St. John's. I think if we go in tied to the tied into the second half, it's going to be a very wild environment in the second half as both teams look for their first goal. If St. John's can get it, it'd be it'd be momentous for their season, beating a beating one of the top teams in the country and one of their rivals. It would just be a massive turnaround. I could see them going on a big win streak, and Gonzaga really wants to keep this momentum going from the Jesuit Classic. Absolutely. If we go if we go scoreless into the second half, there'll be a lot of pressure both from the fans and the players to uh, to take that to take that lead and and get that momentum. So I, I think we're looking at a very exciting second half here. It's a good move by the St. John's attacker. Lots of space here if they can swing it, but space here on the outside for the St. John's. He looks to swing it in. 
Oh, that was a great chance for St. John's. Maybe the best chance we've seen all game. I, I think so, yeah. I mean, everything from the placement of the attackers to just the cross, the perfect cross. I mean, I think it was a great opportunity that they just couldn't quite get. He really had a free header. He really had a free header there. He did, yeah. He was just off by a, just a, a foot or so. Bit, yeah. Set piece chance here for St. John's. They can put a goal here and give them tons of momentum. Be huge, it would be huge, absolutely. Balls ricocheting. On, oh, it's off the post. Gonzaga clears. What a what an opportunity for St. John's. What an opportunity. Just oh, off it's the post. It's that off the post. The ball continues to, to go around. That was a big mistake for the Gonzaga defense. You really can't get yeah, you can't. lots of time there. You really have to be on your toes, yeah, you ready to pressure the with corner kicks. You really can't give them those opportunities and give them all that space and, and time. So I think, um, yeah, I think it was just a wonderful chance by St. John's that just, you know, the luck of the draw didn't go in. That chance appeared to give St. John's a little momentum. They are on the attack once again. Yeah, they're playing very uh, aggressive offense. But St. John's looks to be, or Gonzaga, I'm sorry, looks to be trying to uh, neutralize them. So going to the half, St. John's appears to have a little momentum from that big chance they had. Yeah, I think with getting such a massive opportunity like that, they're going to be their offense is going to be a little bit more enthused and maybe play some more aggressive, take some more chances that I think uh, could really lead to some some exciting play in the second half. That's a mistake for St. John's. They are they have been committing a lot of fouls around that area, but that's getting a little bit close. This is an opportunity for Gonzaga to swing a b swing it into the box, make that key to make that decision. Yeah, I said earlier in the game that they've been making a lot of uh, calculated fouls, but I think this was, was really more of a mistake on their part, and it's giving Gonzaga a great chance to uh, to make some space. So we'll see how that goes. Gonzaga bringing up a ton of men. Mm. They're really pulling out all the stops as we go to the end of the first half. Balls with Ben. It was a little under hit, and uh, the ball's up for grabs around the, in the St. John's attack in third. It's going to be a foul on Gonzaga, and St. John's is going to take possession around the end of the. Mm -hmm. A great opportunity from Gonzaga, but they, they just, just wasn't quite enough, and I think part of that was the great defense uh, played by St. John's. The high pressure defense for sure. That's a great ball into the St. John striker. He's one on one, but he he's dribbling out. And that's a wonderful play. The very very good defense from Gonzaga at the end of the at the end of the first half. Has been to uh, uh, extra time. That's going to be the end of the first half out on ice trade. The score is Gonzaga 0, St. John 0. Very even half. Mm. Alex, what do you think of the first half? Any big takeaways? Yeah, I think that um, it really came down to defense for both sides. And I think that if St. John's wants to uh, get that win and elevate that play in the second half, they're going to have to play a little bit more aggressive offense. you know. But they've definitely done a good job of stifling 
the uh, Gonzaga offense and, and stopping those big chances that, that Gonzaga was taking. St. John's had the one big opportunity of the half. Yeah. Um, if they if they put that away, it would have been a whole different ball game. Absolutely. But we're still 0-0. Zero, zero. We'll see who can come out in the second half and execute. Mm. And it's going to be a wild finish out on Ice Street. But they definitely got some big momentum from that uh, from that chance, and, and we're going to see how that how that looks in the second half. It's always special when Gonzaga St. John's uh, play, especially Absolutely. on Ice Street. Absolutely. Such a historic location. Yeah. A student sections for both teams. Wild environment and uh, good first half. Good first you know. half. Uh, very even play from both sides, and I'm excited to see what happens in the second half. Yep.
and welcome back to uh, Buchanan Field at Gonzaga College High School. We're here for the second half. Uh, the score is currently 0-0 as both teams look to score an equalizer and gain momentum in this game. saw that with St. John's, they had a very close chance at the, toward the end of the first half, but it just didn't work out, so we're going to see if they can capitalize on that momentum and maybe. St. John certainly did gain a lot of momentum uh, from that chance in the first half. It went, glanced off the post, really good chance. It was on a set piece. That's kind of been the story of the game so far, set pieces dominating the game, corner kicks, uh, close free kicks, long looping balls from about midfield. It's going to be a goal kick for St. John's. They've gone long on most of their ones today. Let's see if they continue this. Goalkeeper waving everyone forward. Looks to get one to about midfield. St. John's uh, focus this game hasn't really been on possessing the ball. They've uh, more tried on uh, to uh, counterattack Gonzaga and let them possess the ball, let them make mistakes, and, uh, and use their mistakes against them. Yeah, I think it's, it's for St. John's, and it's less been about containing and counterattacking St. Uh, Gonzaga. Yeah. I think that's really been their strategy this game. So we can see if that continues in the second half. Or maybe they will switch to a slightly more aggressive style of play just as we get to the second half. Of the last St. John's looks to be playing a little bit higher than they did in the first half. And they do have a striker running after uh, the goalkeeper and the center back, so that was a change they made at halftime. Yeah, they definitely were doing it in the first half, but I think that is probably the right move. And that is a not great tackle for the St. John's defender. The referee comes book, and that is going to be a yellow card. No attempt for the ball there. Um, really just grabbed the Gonzaga defender, pulled him, grabbed the Gonzaga off the player, pulled him down. That's a yellow card, dude. That's a, that's a yellow card for a 9 out of 10 refs. And Gonzaga's going to have a chance to whip it in here. Another set piece. Another set piece. That's the way the game. We're going to see if this is going to get a chance to win. That isn't a great set piece for Gonzaga. And St. John's on the attack quick. They have numbers here, but that is a poor ball, and that's going to allow Gonzaga to get back. Yeah, they had a chance for a great counterattack, but it was just those little mistakes that didn't stop you in these hybrid situations. It was 3v1. They had a great opportunity there, for but sure. yeah. it was just a poor through ball. Just that, that poor ball. Didn't really kill you in these hybrid St. John, John's hasn't been too tactical at the front. Um, their, one, their one big chance they had was on a through ball. Um, and uh, I think if they want to win this game and pull one in, they really need to start combining at the front because so far the connection between their center mids and their strikers just hasn't been there. Hasn't been there exactly. Yeah, they've been playing a little bit disconnected. And they need to play. That's going to be a foul on St. John's. Another ball in that 30 or 40 yard range that can dag a to whip it. and uh, a lot of men forward to be putting on pressure on St. John's in this. Zagger really needs to whip those th whip those uh, set pieces in and put more pressure on the St. John's uh, keeper and uh, center backs. Yeah, for sure. That's great defending uh, from, I believe it's Andre Barrett over there. Yeah, and he's been stellar on defense all season, but putting those pressure on the defenders, forcing those tough moves. That's going to be a foul on Gonzaga. Very close to the box. Dangerous, dangerous, uh, dangerous place for a foul there by Gonzaga. Yeah, I look fair for that one. This is going to be a good opportunity for St. John's in a really dangerous part of the field. Get another set piece to see if they can uh, cap that out. Play has been a bit uh, sloppy for both teams so far this game. Lots of free kicks, lots of uh, yeah. corner kicks. 
Uh, no one's been able to put one away yet, but the one big opportunity we saw by St. John's was on a uh, was on a corner kick. Yeah. Let's see if they can have a repeat of that. They're, bad, they're a bit spread out. Uh, I believe they'll all run in before it goes front post. Let's we'll find the back post guy. He's able to beat him over the top, but it's right over the crossbar. Dangerous, dangerous. Another great chance for St. John's, but just couldn't make it just a little bit. But I think they've definitely had more close opportunities against Zaga, and that might be able to give them momentum and the psychological edge that they need to, uh, to advance play. Neither team has really uh, uh, put a lot of shots on goal, and uh, mm. and neither keeper's really been tested. Uh, well, the one shot change that St. John's had uh, went off the post, so Tommy, Tommy McKinnon wasn't really tested by that, and St. John's keeper hasn't really had to dive to save anything yet. Yeah. Oh, big opportunity for Gonzaga here, but they lose it in the attacking third. They are going to have a throw in a dangerous area. Yeah, I, uh, I agree with what you were saying earlier. Little, uh, little big keeper action. It's going to be a shot from Gonzaga, but it is Sky. It's going to be St. John's full kick. As they sub early into the second half. St. John's again going with a uh, long ball on their goal kicks. I think, uh, yeah, I think they've been doing that all game. And so far it's worked out okay, even though Gonzaga has been putting on those pre that pressure on the long balls and, and, and boxing them out and get, finding that space. So we're going to see. It looks like Gonzaga has, uh, has once again done that. Wonderful defending there from St. John's, not allowing uh, Daniel Bowman up top any space. Moving attack here for Gonzaga, but it looks like they're going to turn and look to possess the ball. Able to swing it over to Andre Baird. And this is what Gonzaga needs to do more of. They need to get it to their center mids into more dangerous scenarios. That's a, that's a dangerous tackle there for Gonzaga. Doesn't look like he'll be carded, but maybe a talking to with the ref. Yeah. And I can usually see that being carded by another ref on another day. It was a bit dangerous of a tackle, but yeah. no, uh, no malice intended. Mm -hmm. St. John's again sends uh, a bunch of men upfield, and their keeper will look to put it in a dangerous area. Two St. John's defenders are at the ball first. But they miss it, and uh, Gonzaga defenders fouled while trying to clear it. Set piece for Gonzaga deep in their own half. Another chance to swing it around back and try to create that open space and create those opportunities for Gonzaga like they've been doing all game. It, lo it looks like one of those uh, talking points was uh, to um, get the midfielders more involved. You see one of the center mids uh, checking back, offering help for the center backs as they look yeah. to find a hole. That was definitely a strategy change uh, going to the second half from Gonzaga's coaching staff, and I, I would agree with that choice. Be a set, another set piece for Gonzaga. They've had a lot of set pieces from this area of the field. Yeah, this has been a, a hot area for Gonzaga, so we're going to see if uh, see what they do with this one. Their last couple balls in have been a little bit underplayed. St. Mm -hmm. John's defenders have been able to get there first. If they can put it around that danger area where the keeper does have to make a decision, they're going to have more success here. Yeah. That looks to be a better ball. That's exactly where it needs to be played. It's a good header, but a little bit off. A little bit off target, and St. John's just a little off target, but definitely a good set piece from uh, Gonzaga. bit of back and forth action here. Tommy McKinnon will have that easily. Oh, 
that's a great tackle, right? That's a great tackle by the Gonzaga Exceptional midfielder. By Gonzaga. And St. John's is just gonna just gonna clear it. They let's take another quick throw in. All those mm. quick throw ins are led by uh, Andre Barrett, captain. Looks to be speeding up, uh, yeah. trying to speed up the. Trying to not play. give them a second to breathe, keep the momentum and play going, and uh, I think it's worked out in their favor so far. A good win for Gonzaga. St. John's defender comes in hot, but it's gonna be a throw for Gonzaga on the, on the left side. to be a St. John's throw. The Gonzaga coaches don't appear to be happy with that. Sohn was just given a yellow card. It looks to be a Gonzaga player. He's going to have to come off. Gonzaga's going to make a substitution uh, to player off that was carded and uh, St. John's is going to uh, have the ball in dangerous territory all right so uh, St. John's uh, has really been uh, trying to use the counterattacks from Gonzaga against them mm -hmm. um, and been using the mistakes Gonzaga's been making while transitioning the ball from the backs to their center mids how do you think uh, St. John's can be more tactical with their attacks while they uh, take advantage of what the... Well, I, I definitely agree that they're capitalizing on those small mistakes from Gonzaga, and I think they should definitely continue to do that. But I would be personally playing a more slightly more aggressive uh, offense just as we try to gain momentum here in the second half. St. John's keeper is playing, uh, playing out in boots of the way. St. John's looks to be stepping back a little bit like they were in the first half. We'll see if their uh, striker continues to put on the pressure like he did early in the half. Gonzaga swinging it around the back like they've been doing all game. That's going to be a corner for Gonzaga. Big opportunity here. Ref having a talking to with the Gonzaga and St. John's player. So we find a little bit uh, for a position on the corner. Mm -hmm. Dangerous territory, but the St. John's keeper is able to fist it away. Great play by the St. John's keeper. Uh, we were talking earlier about how there hasn't been too many, too much action with the keepers, but I think that's a mistake at the Gonzaga back. Two v one for St. John's. They play it in the middle. What a save by the keeper, putting the pressure on the striker. Huge chance for St. John's. Tommy McKinnon came out immediately. What a save by the keeper. Got his foot on it. Absolutely huge chance for St. John's. Yeah, this has been their third or fourth massive chance, but I think it's a great bit of defense from Tommy McKinnon. That is the first save that that is the first big save a keeper has had to make in the game, and Tommy McKinnon was ready. He knew definitely he, stepped up. Yeah, he knew uh, St. John's was going to get through one time or another, and he was ready for he it. He was ready for what it. What a yeah. save! Just a great play from Tommy McKinnon. The second big chance St. John's has had this game. I'm not sure if Gonzaga's even gotten a shot off on net, so St. John's might be winning the attacking chances in this game so far, even though Gonzaga yeah. is winning possession. I think so. I think that's that's accurate. And even though I would say Gonzaga's playing a more aggressive strategy, they've uh, they haven't been having they haven't had as many big chances as St. John's. Oh, that's another massive chance. It's another massive chance for St. John's. Free shot on the edge of the box. He was leaning back a little bit. Mm -hmm. He's got it. St. John's has clearly come out of the uh, come out of halftime ready to go. A huge chance uh, would have been a goal if not for the heroics by Tommy McKinnon. Yeah, and uh, all the momentum is going towards him right now. So Gonzaga has to do something drastic right now to gain it back. Yeah, I think uh, going into this game there were there was definitely a little bit of pressure on St. John's just with Gonzaga's undefeated record, but um, but they've turned that around and, and 
definitely have uh, been putting the pressure on and, and have that momentum now. It's going to be a St. John's throw deep in their terror, deep in their uh, deep in their side of the field. That guy, striker Daniel Bowman is playing particularly high, not allowing St. John's to really keep possession. And that high pressure is going to force a mistake by the St. John's offense. St. John Stryker looked to intercept that, but it was a bit off. Wonderful vision from the center to whip it out wide. It's going to be a foul on Gonzaga. They are not pleased with that. Head coach uh, Scott Waller wants uh, more information on the, uh, from the ref on that call. Yeah. It looked to be uh, two people fighting for the ball. The ref might have thought um, Barrett used his arms a little too much or done something like that. Yeah, definitely uh, a contentious fight for possession. I, I didn't get a clear angle on it, but, um, but, uh, but yeah, it was definitely a contentious fight for possession. We're approaching the midway point of the second half and it's still no nil. That ball is going to be way out of bounds on the on the kick from the keeper. And the back is going to take back possession. Momentum has kind of evened out after that huge chance by St. John's. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think once Gonzaga was able to slow it down. Big chance here for Gonzaga. Thomas Cabe is through. Rest going to blow the whistle. Yellow card on the on the St. John's player is going to have to come off, and it's going to be a set piece for Gonzaga. This is a huge chance for Gonzaga. They've, they've built up this momentum, and now it's, it's time to see what they can make of it. St. John's goalkeeper having a conversation with the ref as uh, Gonzaga pairs for the set piece. Mm -hmm. Gonzaga hasn't done very well in these uh, so far this game. They really got to put it in there where they can have a have a chance to make something happen like St. John's did on the corner kick in the first half. Yeah, St. John's has definitely been winning in the set piece department so far this game, so we'll see if Gonzaga can turn this around. You'd really want to see Gonzaga here whip it around the front of the six yard box. It's a low ball, gonna put a little stress on the keeper, but he's able to collect that well. St. John's is good. The St. John's keeper is going to send his, uh, his team up, and he's going he's gonna to play it in dangerous territory. It's a dangerous ball back. St. John's attacker on his back. No call from the referee. Could have been a foul. On, could, have, could have been a foul on St. John's. Yeah. Well, that's a great win from Gonzaga, and a counterattack is definitely possible here. They they have numbers. They're gonna cut it back. That is a wonderful ball. St. John's, oh! Dangerous high foot from the St. John's attacker there. It's always gonna be dangerous when the keeper brings it, when or any player brings up their feet that high, but the uh, ref didn't think it was a foul. Yeah. Um, that was a great chance for Gonzaga uh, on the counter attack, but it was just a, a great defense play by the by the keeper. The St. John's keeper is playing us uh, is playing so far up that you mm -hmm. think the Gonzaga, an idea for Gonzaga could be to take a long shot at him, like test test him a little bit, yeah. because of how far he's playing out. Like in that in that chance you're around the 30, the keeper's around the 10 yard line. So like, if you can play a ball over the top, put a little pressure on him, it, it could uh, lead to great things. Gonzaga. Pressing pretty high. Momentum has definitely evened out after the big St. John's chance, mm -hmm. and uh, pretty even between the two teams. Yeah, I think Gonzaga did a good job of sort of slowing down the, the flow of play and, and equaling out that momentum, getting a few good chances of their own. So now it's a pretty even, even split. It's going to be a foul on St. John's on the left side. Keeper. Uh, 
the referee uh, saw a problem with how the St. John's player uh, shielded the ball. Another set piece for Gonzaga around this 25-yard uh, line. If they can whip one of these in. Yeah, and it's really been story. Well, good set piece play opportunity, but the outside man is going to miss hit the ball. It's going to be out for uh, St. John's. Uh, it was uh, a great setup, but just couldn't couldn't get it right on target. Ball was bouncing a little bit, mm -hmm. and he appeared to slip on the setup. Yeah. St. John's got a little bit of lu lucky there because Gonzaga pretty much had even numbers in the middle. Even numbers in the middle and a great a great setup. So I think that if things had gone a little bit differently, they could have really made something of that. St. John's has an opportunity here. Free shot in the middle of the field. It's going to be blocked by a Gonzaga defender. Great bit of defense from Gonzaga. Gonzaga student section yelling in the ear of the St. John's player uh, taking the throw in. St. John's looking to combine around the back for one of the first times all game. Mm -hmm. Taking a page from the Gonzaga playbook there. Oh, they give her the ball in dangerous territory here. But that's great defending from number two on St. John's. St. John's got a little lucky there. Gonzaga had numbers up three to two there. And uh, it took heroics by number two to stop up. Yeah, that was a great play by number two. Just uh, really putting the pressure on the offense and, and stopping that, that attempt. It's in the final 20 minutes of the, of the game. Both teams still seeking that first goal. Mm -hmm. You've got to think if we end this game nil-nil and you're the St. John's coach, you want the win, but you're not exactly mad about how your team Exactly, played. yeah. And especially with a shaky start to the season, I, if I was the St. John's coach, I would definitely take uh, a nil-nil tie against uh, such a strong force like Gonzaga. Whereas if I'm Gonzaga, you're, you're, um, you're ranked as one of the best teams in the country. This is what your rival is struggling right now. You have to finish these games, mm -hmm. especially as you head into more conference play. Yeah. Definitely an important game for both sides. Zaga takes possession. And that's a good clear by the St. John's outside back. Oh, dangerous ball there. A little too close for comfort for the St. John's keeper. Good win for the Gonzaga backs as they look to turn and go forward. Gonzaga's playing a bit quicker here. They clearly want that first goal. That's a wonderful ball down the line, but it's just a bit too far. Mm. Gonzaga, uh, Gonzaga does force St. John's deep into their own territory. If Gonzaga can keep them here, they can swing one into the box and have a good opportunity here. Yeah, they've definitely done a good job of uh, keeping St. John's in their own in their own territory and getting those big chances and putting the pressure on offensively. Good defense by Gonzaga there with the ball out and blocking the shot. Big opportunity for Gonzaga here. The first defender is beat. It's going to take it way to the outside. Yeah, I don't think that take to the outside was the move. I think you have to continue forward and towards the middle. Mm -hmm. At least for a little bit longer just to set up some good passing. Great move from St. John's. Able to use his body to fend off the Gonzaga defenders, but mm -hmm. it's going to go back to Tommy McKinnon and goal. Some very physical play. That's a great ball in, but the St. John's attacker doesn't come to it, and the Gonzaga the player is able to get it. Assistant referee uh, claims that's a clean, uh, clean tackle. It'll be a Gonzaga throw. Mm.
If you're Gonzaga here, do you consider uh, sending a few more men forward, putting a little bit more pressure on uh, St. John's defense? I think when you move into the last you know, 15 minutes of play, we nil nil, especially in a 40 game against your rival, I definitely would consider doing that. Uh, moving a few men up, playing more aggressive, just taking those chances that they need to, to maybe make something of this these last 15 minutes. The ref's going to call a foul there. It looked like uh, advantage could be played, but he thought the violation was egregious enough to warrant that call. Deep ball in. Tried to do what I said, uh, catch the keeper off time, but he was ready for that one. Yeah. Nice header from the St. John's back, but the Gonzaga's going to be able to win the ball. St. John's wins it back. Gonzaga wins it back. Opportunity here. Oh, but Daniel Bowman just loses in the front. Great opportunity for him. If he could have been that first guy, he would have been away. Yeah, I mean, it was a tough situation. And Gonzaga really, or St. John's really capitalized on that. Battle for the ball here. St. John's defender uh, cuts down the Gonzaga, the Gonzaga winger, and uh, it's going to be a free kick for Gonzaga at about midfield. They take the free kick uh, quick, and they have uh, they have opportunity to go here. That's going to be a corner for Gonzaga. At this point of the game, 15 minutes left. If you can put this one in, you gain all the momentum, and mm -hmm. you make it that much harder for St. John's to come back. Yeah, this one could really win the game if they can, if they can put this one in. Come off. The tarps have come off for the Gonzaga student section. Maybe this will rally the lads on the field. Oh, and it does, and that's a finish for Gonzaga on the corner. It's been a whole theme all game, and Gonzaga's able to put away the set piece. In the 68th he, minute. He rose up over the defender, and the Gonzaga student section is losing their mind. What a finish for Gonzaga. That might have been the dagger. 1-0. St. John's has played so well all game, and Gonzaga just stuck the dagger in. Yeah, I mean, I think it, it really comes down to those small moments of just one defender in a slightly wrong place, or one one um, one corner could really change things. So I think that's just what happened. And Gonzaga has gained all the momentum. Absolutely. St. John's really needs something big here to turn the game around. Yeah, if you're St. John's, you're you're really scrambling to figure out a counterattack with 15 minutes or almost 13 minutes left in the game. St. John's now has to start pressing. They can't allow any more, uh, any more time for the center backs of Gonzaga. Absolutely, they have to pretty much completely change their strategy now that Gonzaga has put one in. St. John's keeper's almost playing uh, more out of his box. He's almost at the 30 yard line now. Yeah, That's yeah. Cool. St. John's sending more men forward, but Gonzaga is going to clear it. St. John's keeper way out of his box. Yeah, that was an interesting move for the St. John's keeper. And the uh, and the goal score for Gonzaga and the goal score for Gonzaga was senior defender Kevin Coffey. What a finish from him! He knew exactly what to do. Uh, do on that corner kick, shielded off his man, and was able to put the header away with confidence. Yeah, this was a lot more than just the right guy at the right time. He was in, he was calculated. This was what he needed. He knew what he needed to do, and, and just executed it perfectly. Yeah. Oh, wonderful move from Daniel Bowman to win the ball back. He's gonna be off sides. Interesting play because from our perspective, he uh, looked on sides, but mm -hmm. it was a long ball, a uh, long bouncing ball that took a while to get there, and he could he was probably behind the defenders when the ball was played and just yeah. came back.
and Gonzaga's just gonna go back and try to control it. St. John's has the pressure at this point because uh, it's one it's one zero. They gotta get an equalizer. And Gonzaga's able to take advantage and go down that uh, that left side, put some pressure on. ball from uh, Gonzaga. St. John's has an opportunity here. Numbers up, but their strikers aren't able to um, uh, aren't able to make a calculated move, and mm -hmm. it's going to be a Gonzaga throw. When you have such defensive pressure, it can be hard to, to make a calculated move in a high pressure situation like that when you're yep. defended by two people. St. John's defender was grabbing the arm. Every ref's going to call that because that gives another opportunity on a set piece. Absolutely. We can, uh, this could be the one that really ends it for St. John's. Into about 10 minutes left in the game. Gonzaga trying to maintain this lead and mm -hmm. St. John's uh, trying desperately to get, a, get another one and get that point back that yeah. they thought they had all game. You know, if I'm the, the St. John's coach, you just have to put everyone up and, and play super aggressive. for the ball, Gonzaga's won it back. Quick shot, but it's a bit off target. It's gonna be a St. John's throw. They have to play with a bit more pace now. It's gonna be St. John's goal kick. St. John's playing with a little more urgency here. St. John's plays a long ball. A lot more men up. It's a good idea for St. John's on the edge trying to flick, but uh, the outcome doesn't work. Oh, big pressure by uh, Daniel Bowman. That appears to be a Gonzaga throw. Looked like they were going to take it quickly, but they're going to slow it down now. Play it to the middle and try to possess. St. John's looks to counterattack here. This is a good. This would be a good win for Gonzaga to keep the momentum of mm -hmm. their season going against Absolutely. a big rival. A win against a rival that would continue a perfect season. Like this could ma be major for uh, for Gonzaga in terms of momentum going into the playoffs. Good step from the from the center mid from St. John's. Excuse me, uh, left mid. St. John's going to play the long ball again. That's a good win for the striker. St. John's is attacking now. Oh, good opportunity for St. John's here. What a defensive play. Wonderful play by the defender there. Look at that. He just perfectly clears it. It was an absolutely wonderful play to get his foot in there, not mm -hmm. allow a shot. Yeah, you can see in the instant replay, it's just a, just a really beautiful bit of defense there. St. John swings it in. It's going to go off the Gonzaga player's back, but it's going to be clear. St. John still has the ball in danger territory, though. A little bit shaky in the back, but Gonzaga is able to get the ball into Tommy McKinnon's hands. He's going to fall and burn some time off the clock. Mm -hmm. The ball's going back and forth here in the mid. Very contentious here in midfield. Gonzaga is able to control for a sec, but a bad pass is going to give it back to... Back to St. John's. It's going to be a Gonzaga throw on um, at about midfield. As we uh, look to enter the final five minutes of the contest. Mm -hmm. You know, 
I just keep going back to Tommy McKinnon's incredible save and what that, that means for the Gonzaga team right now. You know, if it, if it wasn't for that, it would be a tie game. So it was I, a game saving save. It was game saving. Definitely. Save, absolutely. So I, I just keep coming back to that amazing play by Tommy McKinnon. Gonzaga pressing high right now, trying not to give St. John's much time. Don't want them to have time to set up and form a calculated attack. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a foul on the Gonzaga defender. St. John's is going to have an opportunity here. They've been pretty good on set pieces all day. Let's see if they can get another one now. St. John's uh, student section try, trying to Try hype them up, get them, get it going. Trying to rally, get a rally going. With 6.45 left in the game. That's a great ball and a little bit overplayed though. No one was mm -hmm. swinging around the back post for that one. And it's gonna be a contact goal kick. You have uh, long balls like that. You really have to have some people in the back corners just to, just to make sure you, you get that coverage. Collision at midfield. Russ gonna play on. Falls to Gonzaga. They swing it out right. That's a uh, that's a that's a great run by Gonzaga attacker. And they're gonna look to swing it. Taking on the St. John's defenders. Great move from Gonzaga here. Gonzaga attacker was offsides. So that's not to go for the ball. It's into the mm -hmm. St. John's keeper's hands. Mm -hmm. Striker not giving the St. John's defenders much time. Ball's really going back and forth here. Gonzaga trying to control it around the outside, but they're not going to play a ball up. Waiting for the ball there, and it's going to go for a St. John's throw in. They really need to pick up the pace and uh, get one into the uh, final third uh, so they can get a couple shots off. Yeah, with only three minutes left, you know, if you're St. John's, you really have to be playing with emergency. You really have to be taking every chance you can get to try to equalize here late in the game. More back and forth action, but uh, St. John's is going to get the ball in the final third. They're going to play it back, though. Look to possess a little bit. Immediately play it back in. That's a good ball. Let's see what they can do with it. Wonderful defending. And Gonzaga's going to have a lot of time and space here. It's a wonderful touch by the striker. If he can play him in, if he can play the left the left winger and he's open, but he decides to hold it back a little bit. I would say that was a smart move, just given the amount of defensive pressure he was under. Big collision. That's a wonderful win. Can he keep it in bounce? He cannot. And it's going to be a... Oh, it's going to be a card. So what, the card wasn't for the tackle. The card was for the Gonzaga player playing it out. I'm not sure if I agree with that call by the official. Um, yeah, that was uh, something of a controversial call there. Looked to, it looked to be a bit, it looked to be a close out of bounds. He could have mm. just been playing it up. I mean, that's definitely what I saw, and I think that's what the Gonzaga student section saw, so. Forcing a substitution there uh, by giving a yellow card. Um, really changed up pacing, uh, but we'll see how it uh, falls down. Good pressure from the Gonzaga attack. They're going to have numbers up here if they want to go. It's going to be a shot, but it's going to dribble into the hands of the St. John's keeper. And they really got to push it now. This is crunch time for them. Just about a minute left. These might be their last few chances. A little bit shaky in the back, but uh, they again, get the ball into Tommy McKinnon's hand. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a foul on St. John's. Gonzaga can really use this to smoke down the clock. Yeah. Waste a little bit of time and then put yeah. one into the box. Yeah, I think if, if you're Gonzaga right now, you're focusing on running down the clock. You're focusing on uh, keeping the ball out of St. John's hands. And I think that's what they're doing with this, with this set piece. 
Oh, another dangerous opportunity, but St. John's is able to clear it. Not sure if that was the optimal move with how much time is left in the game. Yeah, I think at that point you just have to take the chance. Yeah. Dag's going to be able to waste a little bit of time and uh, put a throw in. We've got about two minutes left in the game. St. John's might have time for one more attack, or uh, maybe Gonzaga will be able to keep the ball here. Mm -hmm. We'll see. It'll really all come down to the way Gonzaga controls the ball on their end. Ball's bouncing around the box. It's going to be swung back in. And St. John's is going to have to go quick here. That's a good punt, good punt from their keeper. Get it right into the zone. St. Gonzaga's able to kick it way up and force uh, St. John's back into their own half. It's a good move by the by the right winger, but wonderful takeaway for Gonzaga. And they've got numbers up here if they want to go forward. In this case, you want to kick it to the corner flags, waste some time. Absolutely. Oh, huge opportunity here for Gonzaga. What a strike, what a save from the from the St. John's keeper. That is a wonderful save to keep it from being 2-0. I mean, look oh, at that, that was Oh, he got his fingertips on it, what a save. That is exceptional from him. Absolutely exceptional. That will be to a Gonzaga corner. It's been a low scoring affair today, and I think a lot, a lot of that is because of the leadership shown mm. by the um, by the uh, keepers of St. John's and Gonzaga. They both have been anchors for their team. Both make big saves. Both making big saves, but also both controlling the ball, the flow of play, making good uh, making good punts, and, and and I think I agree that they've been real leaders in this game. Zag is going to take their time on this corner. And that's the smart move. They're going to keep it in that corner flag. St. John's has to hurry here. This might be their last chance to equalize. The whistle might, might go off when the keeper kicks us forward. We'll see. It appears the keeper's going to, uh, the referee's going to let this play out. Play out. Zaga's going to clear it. St. John's might have time for one final attack. Zaga's going to take the ball, look to possess around the midfield, and uh, boot it forward. Throw in here for St. John's. Balls, balls driven around the box. You don't want this if you're Gonzaga. It's gonna, it's gonna come to a St. John's player. They might have Let's see what the referee calls here. It's gonna be a corner. The Gonzaga players can't believe it. From our angle, it looked like exactly, the St. John's yeah. player just. That definitely looked like uh, it should be a throw. Uh, should be a throw in, but no. It looked to be a goal kick. Oh yeah, sorry. That's what I meant to say. Big opportunity for St. John's here. Wonderful by Tommy McKinnon. Tommy McKinnon with Wonderful. another. Wonderful, he's been a backbone this whole game. Exactly. It's a big saves. Game saving save. Oh, and they looked, they looked uh, St. John's striker looked to uh, take a tough hole in the back. Mm, absolutely. Looked to hit his head. We hope he is okay. the Gonzaga student section chant start the buses. Yeah, a classic uh, chant. And that's gonna be full time at Buchanan Field. Gonzaga takes the win, sprints over to the student section. Zaga win in the books. They are celebrating on the field.
the boosters out there. What a win for Gonzaga, scoring late into the second half. Absolutely. And that's full time, Gonzaga won, St. John zero. A great performance in all aspects of the game, both an intense offense, but also great defense, of course, led by the great Tommy McKinnon. What a sight this is. Lots of jubilation coming from uh, the Inzaga fans, the team, the boosters. Mm -hmm. Just a lot of excitement here on I Street. You got to give it up to St. John's, though. They played a they played a good game. They weren't projected to weren't projected to uh, keep this game as close as they did, and they, they had a chance to win going into the going into the end of the second half until they absolutely. Lost I mean. Just looking at the numbers, they were not expected to keep it this close, like you said. So it's a testament to them that they could keep it so close for so long. Gonzaga has shown multiple Gonzaga has shown multiple times this season that they have been able to win in high pressure environments mm -hmm. on the home and on the at home and on the road. And they just showed it once again. Yeah. We've definitely seen that uh, that the Gonzaga squad thrives under pressure and that High intensity situations like this are where they, they do best. Yep. At, as you say hi to us in the broadcast booth, putting on this game for you guys. Thanks to everyone on the broadcast team for uh, helping put this together. And it was just a great game all around, a great defensive performance, great saves by the, by the keepers. Yeah, really just close, exciting. Just well played soccer. Lots of celebration on the field by mm -hmm. the Gonzaga team, Gonzaga fans. Mm -hmm. It's just a great win. It's a, it's a win that raises morale. It's a win that will help them continue their undefeated streak this yep. season. That's now 11 consecutive wins for the Gonzaga Eagles. And that's all from uh, me and Alex here on I Street. Gonzaga's able to take the W1-0. Have a great night, Eagles fans.